friends, my name is Priyam Prithvi. Today I will tell one of the epics that is Mahabharata. I got this book on my 8th birthday. From this book I got a lot of information of Mahabharata. It is one of the hugest epics. Let's start. Today I am going to explain as well as tell some short parts about the story. First volume. That is when King Shantanu met River Ganga. Then King Shantanu fell in love with River Ganga and he asked if she could marry him. Then River Ganga agreed but only with two conditions. King Shantanu should not ask that why she is doing it and should not stop her what she is about what she is doing. After some years, they were born with they were blessed with a son. Then River Ganga drowned him in the into the river same Ganga. Like that, seven sons passed on, and the eighth son. Then, King Shantanu cannot hold his, I mean, stop his sadness, and stopped her. Then, Queen Ganga said, "Why did you break the? Why did you break the two promises, sir?" Queen Ganga. And then Queen Ganga said that our sons are, are cursed that they should be born on earth earth but they requested me to drown them into the river so that they can live freely and our sons were the Vasus. Then King Shantanu realized his mistake. Then the eighth son was still with Ganga. Then she said this after some years or days she is going to give the son to King Shantanu. Then, after some years, King Shantanu was hunting near the river Ganga. Then, river Ganga appeared before King Shantanu and said, This is our son Devrat. You have to take care of him from now, said Queen Ganga and left Devrat with King Shantanu. Then, King Shantanu returned happily to his kingdom with Devrat. Then slowly Devrat grew up into a handsome and, and tall man. He was well versed in archery. Then one day when King Shantanu was walking on the streets, he saw a fisherman's daughter, Satyavati. He asked the fisherman that if he could marry Satyavati. Then, but the fisherman only had one condition. Only the son born to Satyavati should become the next higher, said the fisherman. But King Shantanu wanted Devrat to be the next king. Then he returned to his palace unhappy. Then soon Devrat came to know about this. Then he went to the fisherman and said, I will not become the next king of Asnapur. The son born to Satyavati will, said Devrat.
but the fisherman said what if your sons ask for the throne then there took a pledge that he will never marry then the gods blessed him with a power and changed his name as bishma charya and he had one thing that he can die when he very wanted to then satyavati was married to king shantanu then satyavati was blessed with two sons vichitravirya and chitrangad then chitrangad was very unhealthy he was become the, he became the king but soon he died without no heir so vichitravirya became became the king of hastinapur then bhishma thought of getting marriage with vichitravirya so from kashi he bought three queens amba ambika ambalika then they were about to get married but amba was in love with king salva so bhishma thought it was not fair so he took back uh, amba to king salva uh, while ambika and ambalika were married to vichitravirya so but king salva said i cannot marry you because i lost uh, i lost a war with bhishma then Amba returned back to Vichitravirya and said marry me sir the Amba but Vichitravirya said you are in love with somebody else then Amba went to Bhishma and asked please marry me but Bhishma did not agree because he vowed that he will never marry then she she was angry and thought of killing bhishma she prayed to lord shiva and then lord shiva gave her a garland whoever wears it can be able to kill bhishma said shiva lord shiva then amba went to so many soldiers and asked to wear the garland but they did not so she threw it in the uh, kingdom she threw the garland in the king of panchal and killed herself again she was reborn as a man called shikandi he wore the garland and 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 went while am um, but one day satyavati went to her first born son vyas he was a sage she asked vyas to bless amba and ambika to bless them with children so ambika closed her eyes when her uh, when her child was going to be blessed so her child was born blind he is none other than dhritarashtra ambalika sons were two vidur and pandu pandu was 
made the king with Vidur as the chief minister. Then Vidur Pandu was married to Queen Madri and Queen Kunti. Kunti was the daughter of Kunti Boj. Madri was also married. Then they were married and Sat and Dhritarashtra was married to Queen Gandhari. She blindfolded herself because her husband Dhritarashtra was blind. Next, what happened was Kunti had a boon that she can call any god with a mantra. Any god for help. She can call any god with a mantra, chanting the loka. One day when King Pandu went hunting in the bush, there was something moving. Assuming it was a deer, Pandu shot an arrow. But when he went and saw, it was a sage. It struck, the arrow struck the sage badly. Then Pandu was cursed that if he touches his wife, he will die. Then Pandu was shocked and returned to his palace and told his wife that about his curse. So forgiveness for Pandu, he went into the forest and started meditation. He could never find more peace. One day, Pandu became old and he died. Badri could not see him, her husband die in flames, so she also went into the fire and died. After that, Kunti uses her boo and calls Lord Dharmaraj and and she asked to bless her with a son. Then Dharma, Lord Dharmaraj blessed her with a son named Yudhishthar. He will always be truthful and handsome. Then then she used the, the mantra again and called upon Lord Vayu. Lord, Lord Vayu blessed Kunti with a son Bhishmacharya sorry Bhim he will always and Lord Vayu said that he will always have the power of thousand elephants then she called the she chanted the mantra and called upon Lord Indra and Lord Indra blessed Kunti with Arjun and Lord Indra said that no one will be able to defeat Arjun in archery. At last she at last Kunti chanted the mantra to twin gods. Ashwin and Kumar. So, then Ashwin, Lord Ashwin and Lord mm. So, she so, so from 
Lord Ashwin and Lord Kumar, Nakul and Sahadev were born to Kunti. Then Kunti thought it was going to be dangerous with five children and her alone in the forest. So she had nothing else to return back to her Singapore. So they did. Then they were surprised. Then all the elders in the in the kingdom were surprised to see Kunti and the five children being Yudhishthir, Arjun, Nakul and Sahadev. So they welcomed them. But Duryodhan was unhappy because they returned. But then they all grew up with the hundred sons, the Kauravas, the five Pandavas were Yudhishthir, Bhim, Arjun, Nakul and Sahadev. Then there was a Gurukul set up near Hastinapur. There Dronacharya teached all the royal families the ways of warfare and Kripa for the Vedas. So Dhritarashtra thought of sending the five Pandavas and his sons, the Kauravas, to the Gurukul. Then they sent them to the Gurukul there. Bhima and Duryodhan took May's fight. Yudhishthir in charioting. Nakul and Sahadev were in sword fight. But Arjun took archery the hardest. After the then then, by seeing Arjun's archery, Dronacharya said that Arjun will be the best archery of all time. Then, Duryodhan's jealousy grew even more on the Pandavas. And then, Duryodhan one day went and complained to Dronacharya, their guru complained that he is being partial to Arjun. Par, I mean partial to Arjun. Then, without replying, Dronacharya placed a wooden board on a branch of a tree and asked his students to gather around the tree. And he asked everyone, what can you see there? Then, Every, everyone gave similar answers like they can see their brothers, Dronacharya, the bird, the tree and the cloud. Then at last, Dronacharya asked Arjun. <coughs> Arjun replied, I can only see the eye of the bird. Then Dronacharya turned to Duryodhana and said, ah, the best archery always looks at his target and nothing else. <coughs> this made Duryodhan's jealousy grow even more stronger. Then, at the Gurukul, there lived a poor boy named Eklavya. He used to hit beside, beside, behind a tree and used to watch the prince practice their archery. Then he made a clay idol of Dronacharya and placed it in front of his heart. And he, he thought that it was Dronacharya and used to practice archery in front of Dronacharya thinking it was 
Dronacharya. One day when Eklavya was practicing, he he saw a dog, dog disturbing him. And he then he shot arrows around its mouth without harming the creature. Then all the prince were amazed. Then Dronacharya went to Eklavya and asked, Who is he? Who is his guru? Then he said, I am Eklavya, you are my guru. Then Dronacharya said, I never taught you. Then Eklavya showed the idol. Then he thought Eklavya is more good at archery than Arjun. I cannot let this happen, thought Arjun. Since he took a pledge that he will not let anyone strike through Arjun his archery. Then, as Guru Dakshina, Dronacharya asked Eklavya's right thumb. Then, Eklavya knew that he could not be able to shoot arrows without his right thumb. But he did not hesitate and cut his finger, his right thumb, with his arrow and placed it before his guru and then Dronacharya made sure that Arjun will always become the best archery. And Dronacharya remembered his old friend Drupad. He said he they both had a history of enmity. And he said he would give half kingdom of Panchar. Then as Guru Dakshina, he wanted them to go capture Drupad. So first he sent them. Kauravas. They returned empty handed. Then he sent the Pandavas. They defeated everyone and brought Drupad captured. Then Drupad asked his promise. I mean, Dronachal asked the promise from Drupad. But he refused and returned back to his kingdom. But he was impressed by his well, by the well young man well versed in archery, Arjun. He, he wanted a, a daughter who could marry Arjun and a son who can kill Dronacharya. Then they put the kind Dronacharya wanted, they both were blessed. Then, so there was a play. There was a place built for the royal family prince to show their great things learned from Dronacharya. Yudhishthir was the greatest charioteer. Bhima and Duryodhan were equal in mace fight. Nakul and Sahadev were the best at sword fight. And at last it was the archery contest. Arjun stepped forward and shot arrows into the sky and made it rain. He also made a bridge of arrows. Then, what happened in the world? Then, 
Somebody said at the speaker, don't announce the winner yet. I can do everything that Arjun did. Said and came out Karn. The secret son of Kunti. Then Kunti immediately realized the golden armored and earring man. If Karan wears the golden armor and earring, no one can defeat him. If if he takes them out, he can die. Then one day that day that day he did the same feat Arjun did. Then he said, I challenge your fight with Arjun. Then Dronacharya said, No, you are a son of a charioteer. But Duryodhan thought it was that this man sounds confident. I can make sure that he can kill Arjun. Then he said, The palace of Ang is one of my shares. He is, I am making Karn, the king of Ang. Even, but Dronacharya said no, even, but still he is a son of a charioteer. Said Dronacharya and made the Arjun the winner. Then, then the five Pandavas went back to Hastinapur and there then there was a fair so Dhritarashtra asked the, past, the five Pandavas if they could go with half of it they went and they built a temporary palace made of lac. But Duryodhan's plan was to kill the Pandavas. Then Duryodhan made the palace of lac. He made it out of lac so he can burn the Pandavas while they are sleeping. But Vidur's spies came to know about this. Then they took the then they took the architects and made a tunnel to the far, to the near forest. Then with the spies told about the plan and told them to escape from the, from the underground tunnel. Then at night, before Duryodhan set it on fire, the The Pandavas escaped and Kunti as well went along with them and they and the six escaped through the tunnel. Then they were very then Bhim was very angry and Duryodhan wanted to kill him. But Kunti and Yudhishthir tell him to cool down and said, Let the let the Kauravas think that we are dead and we will stay in the forest for some days. They, they did not know that there was a demon called Hidim. He was fond of human flesh to eat. Then he immediately smelled them and asked his sister to get them but Hidim but Hidimbi was not like her brother. She did not like to kill humans or eat them. But she was, but she has to because she she doesn't know about her huge strong brother and what he does. So she always listened to her. Then Bhim was out guard when everyone was resting. Then using her magical powers, Hidimbi turned into a beautiful lady and fell in love with Bhim. Then Bhim asked, Who are you? Why are you roaming alone in the forest? Then 
Kadimbi said, My brother is a huge demon. He loves eating human flesh. He wants to eat you and your brothers and your mother. Then she shouted. Then Hidimbi roared Hidim, and came running towards the Pandavas. Bhim put up a great fight and said, How dare you f- fall in love with a human? Shouted on Hidimbi. Hidim. But Hidim was no match for Beam's thousand elephant strength. So Beam easily killed Hidim. Then Kunti realized that even though Hidim is a demon, she is kind. So she got in married with Beam. Then they were blessed with a child, Gatochgat. He, but then the Pandavas came to know that Duryodhan's men, men were camping nearby. So they left that place and went to Ekachakra. One and dressed as poor Brahmins. So the Pandavas and Kunti dressed as poor Brahmins went to Ek Chakra and took shelter at a po- at a Brahmin's house. One day the Brahmin's wife was crying unconsolably. Then Kunti went up to her and asked, What happened, sister? There is a huge demon. He used to attack us every day and kill people. So we said that we will send food every day and he eats the cartload of rice, the bullock, the bull and as well as the driver. Tomorrow it's my son's turn to take food to Bakasu. Then Kunti said, I will send one of my sons instead of yours. Then. The next day, Bhim went. He ate the food, the cartload of rice, thinking he never had a lavish meal in his whole life. When Bakasur saw the empty cart, he became angry and picked up a fight with Bhim. Bhim easily killed Bakasur and returned. Then. When he returned back, everyone at Taika Chakra praised him. That everyone can now live peacefully. With. Then, then, then they heard of Swayamvar at They heard Draupadi Swayambar at an archery contest. Arjun would never leave a con- archery contest, so he also competed in it. They saw their cousin Duryodhan. They were dre- the Pandavas were dressed as poor Brahmins. Then. Karan, so many contestants face. Then Karan came. Karan, Karan was objected by Draupadi. That saying, she is he is the son of a charioteer. Then by this, Karan and Duryodhan were so angry about this then at last Arjun stepped forward the the rules were the contestant cannot directly see the eye of the fish but should look at the 
reflection in the bowl of water. Then Arjun took a aim and shot the arrow. It pierced the wooden fish's eye. Then Draupadi was married to Arjun. So then Drupad came to know that it was no poor Brahmin except Arjun. He was very happy because he wanted Arjun to be his son-in-law. Then, then Duryodhan came to know that it's no poor Brahmin except Arjun. So he caught that the Pandavas are still alive. Now they returned back to Eka Chakra with Draupadi. So, since the Kauravas know that the Pandavas are right, Bhishmacharya and Drona and I mean and Ritrashta invited them back to Hastinapur. They were happy that the Pandavas are still alive. Then the Kauravas gave them kind of crust. It was a thorny forest with demons, thieves, and wild animals and birds. So then Lord Krishna was always with the Pandavas. He was their cousin. Then he told Lord Agni to set it to set the forest on fire. Then Agni immediately Lord Agni quickly began with work. And and then just burned the forest. Then a demon was crying for help. Help. Then the Pandavas, Kunti, Draupadi and Krishna took pity on him and saved him. Then the demon said, I am my son. I am, since you help me, I am going to build you a beautiful palace. Then the palace was built and Krishna and the Pandavas suggested naming it as Indra Prastha. Then Indra Prastha was then Indra Prastha was having more people living in it more than Hastinapur and Indra Prastha was becoming richer than Hastinapur. Then one day Yudhishthar was making a sacrifice yagna a yagna and and called everyone including his cousins then where everyone saw the show and returned it's a duryodhan he stayed to to, to get the details of the architect and to copy them in his own palace in Hastinapur. He noted down all of the details and he saw a lotus pool. A flower was well, it was a painting. It was a painting in the middle of the whole in the of the whole play palace and then he went into the garden assume and saw a lotus pool assuming it was a uh, it was a painting he stepped down to it and fell in he was thinking this is so embarrassing and then he hoped no one to see but draupadi saw say a blind son of a blind father. Then 
Duryodhan returned to Asnapur, shouting at Draupadi. Then, then he was after he returned to Hastinapur. He was very angry and wanted to kill the Pandavas. He he was talking with his uncle Shakuni. He was very clever, but was a bad man. He was a great gambler at playing a game of dice. Then no one knew that he had a pair of magic dice. He told us about about his magic dice to Duryodhan. So he invited the sister to play a game of dice and said. Uncle Shakuni would play behalf of me. Then Shakuni played played the game behalf of Duryodhan. Then at first he he got the numbers he wanted and let the Pandavas win for a few rounds. and after that he made sure that he won every single round and then yudhishthir lost all of his property and even his brothers kunti and and draupadi they were duryodhan's slaves then duryodhan asked dushashan to get draupadi then he bought her dragging then duryodhan said remove her royal robes and jewelry then dushashan was pulling her sari draupadi sari then she played to it to lord shiva she prayed to lord shiva and then lord krishna and lord krishna gave her a never ending sari so after pulling and pulling dushashan got unconscious and fell down then draupadi bore that she would not tie her hair until she washes it with dushashan's blood then bishma also bore that he wouldn't rest until he killed and drank the rest of dushashan's blood then then dhritarashtra said stop this dirty game then duryodhan said after the let, we will play only one last game of dice whoever will lose will go to 13 years of exile the pandavas said the Duryodhan played, and Uncle Shakuni played, and the Pandavas lost, and they went into thirteen years of exile. At the last year, they had a strange rule that they should not be identified, so they disguised themselves. as yudhishthir was a courtier for the for the king they were speaking in they will seek jobs in to king virat's palace so yudhishthir was the will become the courtier then bhishma said he would become a cook arjun said he will become a female dance teacher for the princess and nakulan sahadev were herdsman for the kings horse and cows draupadi for the queen's attendants too bad then kunti was too old to come then bhishma took a vow that he will take care of their mother 
then they seek the jobs then there at the palace the queen's brother kichak he looked at draupadi and wondered who that beautiful girl was she asked that kichak asked draupadi to marry her but she refused politely then kichak did not stop and kept on pestering her then then draupadi went to bhim the royal cook and told her about kichak that night bhishma went into kichak's room and killed him easily even though kichak is not very strong but he is no match for beams thousand elephant strength so then the news reached sasnapur and thought we found the kaurava said duryodhan then he went to king virat's palace so but bishma's beam said the day before you noticed that we were we were found that the day before we were found was the day we completely finished the 13 years of exile so we have done it then now give us back our kingdom said bhim but said bhim but duryodhan refused then krishna went to duryodhan and said you have to give them back their kingdom at least give each of them a village said krishna but a village said duryodhan i will not give them even a land piece of a needle said duryodhan then krishna said you will have to regret because one day the pandavas will come in revenge said krishna and returned back to the pandavas and said you will have to fight with the pand with the kauravas but just before the fight started the war started the pandavas but arjun came down his went away from his chariot where and arjun st- went uh, walked away from his chariot then krishna went in the disguise of lord shiva lord krish lord vishnu went and said you will have to do your duty everyone is born on the earth to die now you have to do your duty sir lord vishnu then the whole what lord vishnu said was it is known as the bhagavad gita just at that time when lord vishnu was telling the bhagavad gita at that time lord indra father of arjun went to karna as a brahman as a beggar went to karn and asked for his golden earrings and armor in those days when beggars used to ask something those days when brahmins asked for arms they the people never let them go empty handed so karn gave his golden earrings and armor to him then 
he went away lord indra then the fight began lord krishna blew the flute and then the fight started all warriors fought bravely for the 19th day of war the pandavas had the upper hand but the pand but the kauravas fought strongly then then shikandi came and killed bishma because she can he can only he is the only one who can kill bishma because of the garland then days passed on of the war then then Abhi. abhimanyu abhimanyu fought the cover fought lot of the kaurava side but then but the kauravas caught abhimanyu in a maze in a maze and killed him when bishma died arjun could not see his great grandfather fall onto the ground and arjun made a bed of arrows for his great grandfather bishma then bhim killed duryodhan in maze fight then nakulan sahadev fight with the sword very strongly no one were able to defeat them then all the kauravas were almost finished some of them were left then then the kauravas then karna stepped forward in his chariot and fought with arjun but karna's chariot wheel was stuck in mud before he could lift the chariot arjun shot an arrow and killed karna all the kauravas died and the pandavas win where the pandavas and the kauravas fought the battlefield was kurukshetra thank you for watching this video see you next time sorry sorry wait one second after the pandavas won they returned back to hastinapur dhritarashtra killed himself and handed it over to yudhishthir yudhishthir became the king of hastinapur thank you